Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and there's a lot of fear in the market for fast memory speeds. You might not even think that you need 4400 megahertz memory, but we've teamed up with Thermaltake today to show you exactly how easy it is to run 4400 megahertz memory on some of the latest hardware. Let's do this. The MSI Prestige PS341WU monitor delivers the ultra wide experience you've been waiting for. No more compromises on resolution due to its incredible 5K 2K IPS panel and a stunning picture thanks to HDR600, DCI-P3 colour and a versatile 34 inch design. We think it's one of the best monitors ever created. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So the biggest misconception is that kind of fast memory isn't going to work in your system. Well luckily, I mean what we've actually got here today is we, we are working on the AMD platform purely because it's probably been the most successful platform launch that's ever existed, at least in the last kind of 10 years. So we all know as well that with AMD, it absolutely adores fast memory speeds. So what we've got here is the X570 Tai Chi from ASRock. We've got the Prime X570P from ASUS. We've got a Ryzen 7 3700X. And um, of course, because this video is sponsored by Thermaltake, we've gone with the Flowring 360 AIO. And then the all important memory. So the memory that we've got here is the Tough RAM DDR4 16 gig kit comprising of two eight gig modules and uh, it's 4400 megahertz in speed. Now, in terms of obviously the speed, that is gonna come at a premium because you are gonna pay a little bit more for it. Just to kind of put it into some perspective, in the UK at least, this memory in its 3000 megahertz capacity, it comes in at around 80 pounds. If you wanna go for the 4400 megahertz capacity uh, or speed, you are gonna be looking at about 134 or 135 pounds. So there's, let's say about a 55, 60 pound price difference. In America, the price difference is about $70, going from the 3000 megahertz kit up to 4400 megahertz. But we do know that with AMD Ryzen, it does absolutely you know, it adores fast memory speed. So essentially what we should be able to do is the faster memory we put in there, the more we're gonna get out of the processor in other tasks as well. So that's essentially what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to be looking at what this memory can do, how fast it actually kind of relates to, you know, memory speeds, latency and things like that. We are gonna, of course, attempt to push it a little bit further. I haven't got much hope for it because being at 4400 megahertz, uh, even with carefully screened ICs and the quality behind these uh, these particular memory modules, I'm not expecting it to go far, maybe one step further than 4400 megahertz, but even then I'm a little bit cautious about it. But the main point of this video really is to show you exactly how easy it is to put it into two different motherboards, so from two different brands. We've got ASRock and we've got ASUS, and I wanna show how easy it is to put these modules in, build up a system, and set the XMP profile or DOCP or AXMP or AMP, however you want to word it, AMD's own version of Intel's XMP. I want to show you how easy it actually is to put these modules in and just set that profile and away you go. In theory, it should be relatively easy. So I guess, yeah, let's jump into it and see exactly how easy it is to get these memory uh, modules running at the rated speeds. Wish me luck. So spec-wise in the memory, we have got a 16 gigabyte kit. It comprises of two eight gig modules. It is DDR4, 4400 megahertz, and the timings are 19, 25, 25, 45, and it has an operating voltage of 1.45 volts. So now we're in the BIOS. You can see that we've got our memory here, two sticks of Thermaltake, uh, eight gig each, and it's currently running at 2666. Uh, if you go into the advanced mode of the ASUS BIOS, we have actually updated the BIOS as well, so you can see that we're on the latest version, 1405. Across to AI Tweaker, and then we've got AI Overclock Tuner. Going on there, we have DOCP, tells us a little bit about performance, how it should be, yada, yada, yada. And then straight away, you can see that it sets the profile at 4395 or 4400 megahertz. Timings 19, 25, 25, 45 at 1.45 volts. If we wanna check all this, uh, obviously we've got our memory frequency here, which is currently set to 4400. Scrolling down, we can see our voltage is automatically set to 1.45 volts. And then on the timings, just to make sure that that's all set in as well, 19, 25, 25, uh, 45. So that's basically exactly what we want. 
If we now save this, um, this is what I really like about a Zeus BIOS actually. They kind of tell you what you're changing. So you can see that we've changed the memory frequency from auto to 4400. The timings from auto to 19, auto to 25 and so forth. So uh, yeah, let's save this, get into Windows and just make sure everything is as it should be. So we're in Windows. We want to check obviously what speed the memory and everything's running at. And taking a first look, we can actually see the CAS latency is reading at 20 instead of 19. I'm going to put this down to maybe a communication error with the software because we saw in the BIOS that it definitely was 19. Everything else seems absolutely fine, 25, 25, 45. If we actually go into the SPD, we can check uh, in regards to them timings. And again, yeah, it's showing at 20. So there's definitely some kind of error there. Obviously, we can confirm whether this is a problem with the memory or whether it's just some kind of communication error uh, through the motherboard when we start testing the other motherboards. Uh, I will look in ADA 64 as well. We can run a really, really quick benchmark just to kind of see what the read, write, copy and latency uh, results are. And again, yeah, it's reading 20. So something seriously wrong either with the memory or with the motherboard. But um, I'm going to probably hazard my guess more down to a communication error between the memory and the motherboard itself, as opposed to the memory. Uh, because I know that when they make this memory it is the ICs have been, you know, really kind of they've screened the ICs so that they are, I guess, the most compatible, that they have the best stability, the best chance of overclocking, all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I honestly don't believe it's a memory. Uh, looking at the speeds that we've got, 48,111 megabytes a second on the read, 28,726 on the right, and 50,196 uh, on the copy with a latency of 80.1. This is all running, uh, as we said earlier, 2200 megahertz or 2196 DDR, making that 4400. Um, 20, 25, 25, 45. Uh, so yeah. So we've got the ASRock X570 Tai Chi all built up. We're in the BIOS. I've updated it to the latest version, which is 2.70. You can see that we've got our 16 gig, um, two 8 gig modules currently running at 2666. If we go across to the overclock tweaker or OC tweaker, uh, we're gonna leave most of the settings the same. It really is as simple as just going into the load XMP setting. And you can see here's our profile. XMP 2.0 profile one, DDR4 4400. It is 19, so hopefully I'm expecting the right results this time. 19, 25, 25, 45 at 1.45 volts. If we go on to that, we can see a few things change. So the DRAM frequency changes from 2666 to 4400. DRAM voltage from 1.2 to 1.45. And if we go into our timings, we can see that we have 19, 25, 25, 45. Uh, so yeah, everything is pretty much um, where we kind of want it to be. So all we've got to do now is save it and go into Windows and just make sure the settings have taken effect. And I will do just another quick ADA 64 run just to kind of see what kind of results that we actually do get. Now we are in Windows and again we're just going to uh, in CPU-Z look at the memory tab and again for some reason we can see the CAS latency at 20 so I'm now starting to think because we've tested on um, two AMD X570 platforms maybe it's an AMD communication error 20, 25, 25, 25, 45 and you can see we're running at 2199.5 megahertz so double it we have basically 4400 megahertz. The SPD, I uh, just want to check that as well. Yeah, again, it's reading 20, so maybe it's an AMD thing. Uh, I'm trying to give Thermaltake the benefit of the doubt here because I don't actually think it's a problem with the modules. I want to run ADA64 AD again just to kind of give you an idea as to what read, write, copy speed you're going to get and what uh, latency you're going to get. Again, it is reading 20, but we are at 4400 megahertz. Um, again, just to kind of go through the specs, we are running a Ryzen 7 3700X. So, not a stupidly high-end part, but pretty kind of mid-range to high-end um, in the grand scheme of things. So read speed, 48,298 megabytes a second. The write speed is at 28,774 megabytes a second, and the copy at 48,894 megabytes a second. Just waiting for the latency to finish up. Last time, I think it was 80.6, I believe it was, so expecting somewhere around the same, 80.5. So these are the results that we've got on the X570 Tai Chi. Again, just showing you even on an ASRock board how simple it is to just load the XMP profile of quite, I, I guess, essentially what is stupidly fast memory, 4400 megahertz, and you can go straight in. So now that we've got, I guess, what you'd call the stock testing out of the way, I mean, the way that, that I kind of see it is 4400 megahertz memory, this is the speed of the memory. It is the stock speed of the memory. 
Technically, when you're pushing um, a processor and a motherboard beyond what they actually specifically put out as their key specification, you are technically overclocking. So with Ryzen, um, on Ryzen 3rd gen, it has a speed that is a stock speed, which is 2933. But there's nothing stopping you setting an XMP profile like we did to 4400, but technically that is classed as overclocking. But with us not being content on that being enough, we wanted to see if we could take it a little bit further. So simply, you'd go down to memory frequency. We can see that we're set to 4400 megahertz. Let's just try it 4466. You know, I'm not expecting it to work, but you never know. So again, you can see, uh, yeah, that it's gonna change us from DDR4 4400 to 4466. Let's boot into Windows and see what it does. So it actually looks like it is booting up, which I'm a little bit surprised about. I mean, generally, if we had a slower speed memory such as 2666, I'd expect to be able to go up a few bumps to say DDR3000, but going from extreme speeds of 4400 up to 4466 is pretty damn impressive. Now, a um, little bit kind of behind the scene knowledge, we have actually tried the running this kit on Intel and well, frankly, it just didn't work at the rated speeds. On a Zeus board, we managed to get to 4,000 megahertz. On an ASRock board, we were able to get to 4,300 megahertz. But I think it's really down to Intel and their memory controller that's actually on their chips. We did test it with an i7-9700K as well as an i9-9900K, but yeah, we just, had, uh, we just had issues with it. We all know that AMD has the better memory controller, so that's why we wanted to do this on two different uh, AMD boards, I guess at different price points. So the X570P that we're using now, uh, that we tested before and now we're doing the overclocking on, as well as the X570 Tai Chi. 48,562 megabytes a second on the read, 28,729 megabytes a second on the write, and 51,063 megabytes a second on the copy, with the latency at 79.9. So just remembering the figures that we saw before on stock, I know the latency has definitely gone down. So there is a slight uh, difference there, I guess. Um, let's just see if we can maybe go one step further. I'm, I wasn't even expecting that small increase up to uh, what we were able to get there. So going beyond that maybe is gonna be a, a slight um, sort of issue. I do feel that maybe we could increase it in smaller increments by changing the B clock. But um, I think going up from 4466 up to 4533 might just be one step too far. But let's give it a go and see what happens. Let's try. So it's attempting to boot up, but so far it just seems to be boot looping. So it's gonna do that three times, I'm guessing. Apologies for the noise, that is the graphics card. Um, it's gonna do that three times and then it's just gonna kick us straight back into um, a message saying that it's gonna boot in safe mode. That's kind of what I'm guessing is gonna happen here because it should have booted up by now. Which goes to show that yes, we can overclock a little bit, but maybe not as far as you know what we was hoping to. But still, if you're buying 4400 megahertz memory, then that's kind of, you know, what you're expecting to get is blistering fast speeds at the stock reference kind of rating uh, of speed and yeah you can see there so yeah we could always clock it back down but we have got we could even maybe even slacken off the timings we could increase the voltage a little bit i personally wouldn't like to and i think you're going to end up in the in the realm of diminishing returns in terms of what you're going to put into it you're not really going to get back in terms of the performance and stuff like that because the performance increases i guess at least in real time sort of real world environments, gaming, rendering, workstation stuff, I honestly don't think you're gonna get it by slackening off the time, it's just to kind of increase the speed a little bit. So there you go guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up there because uh, I think you know this is the best place to, to really sort of wrap things up and, and go from there. Obviously, I mentioned a little bit earlier about speeds and pricing and stuff like that. Let me know where you think the sweet spot is in terms of would you pay extra for 4400 megahertz memory in comparison to say 3000 megahertz? Do you think that the value is there yet or is there still some kind of disparity between the big jump up to 4400? Do you think maybe the, the jump in price and value is just that little bit too much at the moment or do you think it's got a little bit more sensible because RAM prices have gone down? Let me know in the comments section below and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and thanks to Thermaltake for sponsoring it. It's been an interesting one, I've got to say. Cheers guys, see you later, bye bye.